Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's Rustbug Collector here, and I finally decided on a name for this series. We're calling it Throwback Toy Talks. Basically, the 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 part of the show where I can talk about uh, some older figures, some older sets, things like that, stuff that I'm not technically doing a full review of, but I still want to talk about it here on the channel. So we're putting it under the tag throwback toy talks to talk about toys that are throwbacks they're old they're not on shelves anymore they're stuff that many of us grew up with and you know for for instances like today's video i actually will be going and unboxing them um, but that won't be for every video so we'll just get into it so as many of you know especially the veterans of this channel uh, this kashik trooper here from the order 66 two-pack is my primary army build. This is the figure that I would be very happy with 50 of. Right now I think I'm sitting at like six or seven, but you know, I, I can never have too many. And part of that love for the Kashyyyk Troopers just in general goes all the way back to when I was a kid. And for Christmas, I got a very, very awesome uh, battle pack, a Kashyyyk themed battle pack. And some of you may already know where this is going and maybe I have it in the thumbnail, who's to say? But basically back in the day, I remember seeing a Target ad with this specific Kashyyyk Trooper pack in it and I saved up money for it like crazy. And I, I pinned it to the refrigerator to show my parents and all that kind of stuff. And when the time finally came that I had enough saved up for it, uh, I was told, no, you, you can't buy it. It's too close to Christmas. And I said, okay, well, I will buy it after Christmas. And I thought in the back of my mind, maybe I'm getting it for Christmas, but Christmas came and went, we opened up all the presents and there was no Kashyyyk battle pack and I was kind of bummed. And then there was one final present. It was a tiny little package like this big, literally like that big on the Christmas tree. It was like tucked into the branches and it was for me, you know, I was like, okay, whatever. I open it up and it's a folded piece of paper with a drawing that I had done like the previous week of uh, ATST, ATRT, you know, kind of my understanding of those things back when I was, well, let's see, back when I was like 10 or 12, you know? And on it, it just said, look upstairs in the tub. And immediately I pretty much knew what that meant. I, I knew what was in that tub upstairs. I ran upstairs and pulled this from the tub. So in today's throwback toy talk, we're gonna be unboxing the ATRT Kashyyyk Assault Squad doesn't say Kashyyyk down there, but I added that because it's from Kashyyyk and we're going to be talking about it because that's what we do here. Now, of course, it wasn't this specific ATRT assault squad. It was a different one, one that I opened up on Christmas morning and enjoyed for a very long time. But I still have that Kashyyyk commander, but I don't have the ATRTs. I don't have the ATRT troopers. Unfortunately, I think I traded those to a friend many years ago and he sold them at a garage sale, much to my chagrin. It was a whole thing, but uh, yeah, you know, I don't have this anymore. And last month was my birthday. Uh, I, I decided to treat myself, just treat myself to this. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did. So yeah, not only is this a great addition to my Kashyyyk army build that I did not have already, or at least I did not have currently, but also it's just a really special memory and it could not be more fitting to get this on my birthday or, you know, around my birthday as a birthday present to myself. <laughs> so yeah, back in the day, this was a Target exclusive. You can see down in the corner, only at Target. There's actually a clearance sticker up here that says was $29.99, now uh, $20.98. So it was sold for uh, $20 back in the day or $30 full retail price, which is a really really good price when you think about it. You're basically paying $10 a figure, not counting the ATRTs. Any way you figure it, whether it's in current money or past money, uh, this was a good price. $30, three figures, two ATRTs. It's pretty awesome. The packaging is in that very cool, very classic 30th anniversary theme, I suppose, the battle packs like this. I think this is very reminiscent of like the early Battlefront logo and stuff, just the scratching and, and all that. Of course, one of the star features here in my mind is just how cool it is to have the fully printed interior to this box. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could take this box, open it up, remove like this front portion and keep the backdrop as like a shelf insert almost. Like it's fully printed ground texture. You can see in the back there, you have like the the double moons of Kashyyyk. 
It's very, very cool, very detailed, and it's just not something you're gonna get in a box set today. Turning it around here to the back, you have some descriptions for each character. You can pause and read those if you feel so inclined. This is a really cool image here, just as a uh, photographer myself. Uh, this is a very cool practical set that is done somewhere probably at Hasbro and you can see that this is done with like moss and such. You can see where the light's hitting these. These aren't product renders like we've been getting with a lot of recent stuff from Hasbro. This is actual product photography in a practical set and I love that. What I do love is that down here it says product shown in fantasy situation which <laughs> is kind of comical to me since this is a practical photo shoot. And then also what's even more humorous are the dead Wookiees. There are three dead Wookiees on the back of this box. So this is clearly a post Order 66 setting. You know, I think in the original rendition of Revenge of the Sith, the clone troopers and Kashyyyk went and rounded up and hunted down Wookiees. So you got uh, three different dead Wookiees. How, how tragic. Additionally, you can see a couple other really great battle packs, especially the clone attack on Coruscant. That is a just beautiful battle pack in terms of classic clone trooper battle packs. I really miss the days when we got battle packs like this. It's so, so classic and so great. Like you just get one box and you get a little squad. Maybe you get a squad of clones on Coruscant. Maybe you get a Kashyyyk squad like this. Maybe you get an entire battle in the battle pack. You know, you got some Jedi and you got some Sith. And you just get this one set, say for Christmas, and you've already got a thousand different little battle scenarios you can play out with these figures. It's just, it's such a great idea. I know it's not really something that many companies do these days, but I really wish more companies would be able to go back and do stuff like this. But without further ado, let's break this packaging open and see what's inside. I'm going to actually kind of try and do this uh, semi on camera, uncut, you know, because this is a classic toy unboxing. It's not something modern, it's not something we've all seen before. This is actually quite a trip down memory lane, I feel like. But you can open up that side panel, you can pop this open. I think this just folds out, I think. Let's see here. And with a little bit of wrangling and some elbow grease, I did have to kind of cut that, unfortunately, but there we go. There it is out of the box. And like I said, this works really well as like some set dressing, you know, for a shelf display or something. Maybe cut these side fins off and just have the, the backdrop there. This is a really cool way to do toy packaging. I absolutely miss this type of box sets just sitting on store shelves. They were so awesome and iconic. On the back here, we've got the, uh, the instruction manual which is always important to not look at and throw away promptly. I don't actually know if we need it. It just shows where to put the batteries in. I've got some batteries here, so we will be showing the, the play feature with these, which I absolutely love, especially as a kid, I can remember having a blast with the play feature on these. As for getting the figures off, uh, you know, they're secured with a variety of different plastic tapes and pegs and little tabs. It's quite a nuisance. I can remember certainly having this experience, you know, on Christmas morning, you don't want to mess with this very much. You know, you kind of just want to have the figures out and to just enjoy them. But unfortunately, you often had to do a bunch of stuff like this, wrangling the plastic tabs and the tape. But with that, the commander is free from his packaging for the first time in over 10 years. This set was released in 2007, which means these guys have been just trapped in plastic for, uh, let's see, that would be about 15 years, which is just absolutely crazy to think about. Whenever I undo these little twisties, I always kind of think of uh, Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story 2, where he gets trapped in his toy box by the evil version of himself and he gets those twisty ties done on his arms and he can't get out of them because they're like the child's bane. You can't undo those as a child. They're just, they're made out of animantium or something. It's just impossible. So first on the box is the clone commander. That's, that's it. He's just a clone commander, a Kashyyyk clone commander. I can remember back when I got this that I was just so curious about who these clone troopers were. They weren't in any concept books that I had from the library. They weren't in Revenge of the Sith. Like, where'd these guys come from? I had to know. They had this cool marking on their armor, including the pauldron and the ATRTs, which just 
gave such a mystery to me. Like, I was so obsessed with trying to figure out where these guys came from. Obviously, that played into my channel as it is today, where I talk about concept clones and all that kind of obscure clone knowledge. It's always just been part of how I've enjoyed clone troopers. I love to know the just ins and outs of the different obscure legions and things like that. And these guys kind of sparked that because there was no information about who they were. They were just camouflage clone troopers. And I, I think that probably prompted a big part of why I like these guys. They're just so cool. They're militaristic. You know, they have a very tactical style about them. And yeah, what else can I say? I love this figure. Now for reference, this is my childhood version of this figure. Um, yeah, somewhere along the lines, I got the idea that I wanted to make him battle damaged, I guess. So I took a hot needle and gave him bullet holes and scratch marks to mimic like Sev, you know, Sev's armor with all the blood all over it and everything. Uh, yeah, this is my original Kashyyyk Commander. He has seen better days. And, you know, honestly, it's okay. Like, I had fun with this figure back in the day, customizing it and just, you know, enjoying it for what it is, playing with it for what it is, a cool clone commander. There's nothing wrong with doing this to a figure, especially if you're a kid. But it's also really nice to now have one in more mint condition in the collection, you know? Kind of have these guys side by side. This one with all the memories, and this one just as, like, the pure representation of that, I suppose. Now, this is just a straight-up recast, recolor of the 2005 Revenge of the Sith Bakara, so there's really nothing new here. He comes with a giant oversized DC-15 with spring-firing accuracy. It's a pretty weird gimmick. The oversized DC-15 is kind of silly. I can remember not liking it when I when I first had it, but... He also should have a play feature with this blaster might be too much for. Um, he should have, he should have, does he not have the play feature? Hang on a second, what does mine, yeah, mine's got the play feature. You know, you squeeze the legs and you get this like blaster effect, which works better if he has like a blaster pistol. But this one apparently, maybe from sitting in the package for too long, just doesn't have it. He doesn't have any kind of play feature, which is... Oh, wait, there we go. Well, almost. Yeah, I think just from sitting in the package for so long, it just uh, is kind of gummed up for some reason, and it may not work, or maybe it just needs, like, broken in. But, yeah, 2005 Bakara repainted into the Kashyyyk Commander. I love the deco on this guy. I love the camouflage. But, yeah, there you go. Bakara 2005 repainted into a Kashyyyk Commander in 2007. Same figure, same accessories. Just an all-new deco. And, you know, the other thing that I always wondered was why did a, you know, a jungle clone trooper need cold weather gear? Uh, I thought maybe he'd be sweating a lot in that armor. But either way, it looks cool. And as we all know, the rule of cool is more important than practicality. So there we go. Kashyyyk Commander. Now on to the other figures. And, of course, more twisty ties. In fact, more than I would care to ever try and take off. But... We gotta do it for the sake of the video, I am just going to cut it here and jump ahead to when I take them off the box. And just like that, with the magic of television, these guys are free from their plastic bondage as well, or mostly free. I didn't take them off the bubble just because, you know, I'm trying to do an unboxing properly here, and I wanted to show you guys the misery that most kids had to go through trying to open these guys, especially on like Christmas morning when you're just impatient, you want to get them out of the box, and you got to go through all these various steps to be able to do that. And what I love here is that they also went to great lengths to even just get this like plastic bubble put around their hands and on these uh, <laughs> on the controls here. I think that's hilarious. Of course, those rubber bands are completely rotted away, so those just are falling off, but kind of makes it easier to get them off. However, it does leave some like icky residue on the hands from time to time. So not a huge fan of that, but it's not, it's not the worst. You know, you can wash that off pretty easily. And these guys are also wired onto their walkers, I guess to keep them from falling off in the box, which definitely makes sense. But I think if I remember correctly, I may have kept one of mine wired on for quite some time just because these figures are not meant to be on these walkers. Not at all. They just do not sit properly. They don't hold on properly. I think the best ATRT trooper for sitting on an actual ATRT has to be the vintage collection version or the pre molded version. Uh, these Revenge of the Sith mold figures just never had 
the right articulation for it. They needed outwards at the hips or something like that to just give them the, uh, the, the movement that they needed to actually sit properly. Again, I'm being very careful with these figures since this is, you know, fresh out of the box for, for the first time in 12 years. Kind of kind of nerve-wracking. I'm worried that maybe some of the joints will have deteriorated depending on how these were stored. But so far, so good. Nothing too horrible has happened. They seem to be holding up just fine, albeit a little bit... Uh, a little bit gummy, like not not soft, but they feel kind of tacky, like the plastic feels a little tacky. That again may just be storage, that might be some plastic deterioration, I don't know. Um, I've never had that happen, but then again I don't typically open older figures like this, so it may remain a mystery for a bit. But there we go, uh, they actually sit on there fairly better than I remember, still not perfect, but pretty good you know pr pretty good certainly well enough for a child to enjoy them and appreciate them one thing that really surprised me though was that both of these ATRTs have unique deco which I was not really remembering in my mind I thought they were just the same but you can see here on that front panel there is different paint deco it's still going the same way in in terms of direction but there's different color patterning this one has more of that tan mixed in this one is just more brown and green I think the legs are the same. I guess if we uh, flip those around, well, no, the legs are unique as well. So that's interesting. Yeah, these whole the whole walker is uniquely decoed from the other, which is really cool. Just makes it more unique to have two in the collection. You're not just getting two the same pattern camo ATRTs. You're actually getting two unique variants. And of course, this one here does have that issue with the bent barrel, but that should be easy enough. I'll boil some water, dip that in, and it will straighten out, and I can, you know, re reshape that with no problem. That's the nice thing with the softer plastics. But having these in hand again is just so awesome. The ATRT is such a cool vehicle, kind of the precursor to the ATSD. Definitely less practical for the driver, because I feel like these guys could just get sniped off so easily. You've got antennas back here, some like storage or power cells. Hard to say which exactly, but either way, looks cool. The paint decos are out of this world on this set. I mean, yeah, the camouflage and stuff is intense, but then you also got all these little like stripes, little power cells, some red markings there and there. Like, they really went all out with this. Again, at the $30 price point, I don't think you would see something like this today ever. Not a chance. And as for the drivers, these guys are cool as well. I love the camouflage pattern that they have. It's actually kind of similar to the camouflage we see on the Geonosis Spec Ops Troopers, like Commander Jet and those guys. You know, just with those triangles coming into the chest plate, so I think that's really cool. And so far, there hasn't been any official concept art for these clones, so it's possible that they're a Hasbro design. It's also possible that they are just a long-forgotten concept art clone that was sent to Hasbro in the early days. Uh, there was something along the lines of like 200 clone concept designs done for Revenge of the Sith, so certainly some of these figures produced could be among those 200 and we just don't know it, but it's probably going to remain a mystery for a very, very long time, unfortunately. And again, like with the Commander and the ATRT, these guys all have that unique little marking. I guess you could kind of call it like an S shape. I always thought it was an S because my name is Sam, and so it just fit perfectly. You know, I mean, come on, cool clone troopers with camouflage and an emblazoned S on their armor. It was just the perfect storm for me to want to own these guys, and I'm so glad that I was able to get them for Christmas. Like, that is such a core memory for me. So I'm going to have to splice this into wherever it fits in the video, but I just noticed something absolutely crazy about this set, and I never knew this before. There's actually three unique figures here. I don't know how I missed this growing up, I don't know how I missed this in all the times that I have looked at these, but uh, okay, so with the commander you have the S mark with a line running through it, which I guess could be denoting that he is the commander or the squad leader, I don't know. But then, I thought that the ATRTs and the ATRT troopers had the same markings, but it turns out that this one has the S mark with a dot, Likewise on his chest, we'll try and get that in focus. He has the S mark with one single dot and Then this ATRT with a different deco also has a different symbol He has the S mark with two dots and that is replicated on his chest as well 
I never, never in my life realized that these guys were unique. The figures have the same camouflage deco apart from that. They just have slightly different markings on their chest, whereas the ATRTs actually have two completely different decos overall. But it's just super interesting. I never noticed that they are uh, unique in that way. You know, they have unique markings, and I guess that that denotes that maybe this is a specifically unique squad of three clones for whatever reason. It's possible that similar to maybe like Waxer and Boyle in their ARF Trooper armor, these are just two, you know, named clone troopers. You could go that route and say that they just have unique markings that way. But yeah, there, there's got to be some sort of interesting explanation for that. Why each one has their own marking. I always thought that these guys had the same marking as the commander. Turns out they don't. I guess I'd love to hear down in the comments if you knew that these guys had different markings and uh, maybe some of your fan theories about what they signify because <laughs> I just, I completely missed this somehow. And yeah, these guys are just cool. Like the ATRT Trooper was always one of my favorites. I'm not a huge fan of the mold. It just has some limited articulation to it overall, but these guys are too cool not to enjoy. I love that there's kind of a mix of camouflage as well as like actual markings just blended together. You know, some of these markings here on the leg could be seen as like camouflage here on the chest as well, but then he has just like a stripe running down his helmet with different grays and greens blended all together. It's just such a unique design. If it is a Hasbro design, that's amazing. Like I, kudos to them for being you know, so creative with many of their designs. And I also just really love the bright green eyes on these guys. It's kind of eerie, especially if you think about maybe there would be a little bit of a glow behind those. So these guys are patrolling at night maybe and you just see glowing green eyes, you know, riding through the mist on a big walker. It'd be pretty terrifying. That's how I kind of imagined it, but maybe that's not uh, exactly how they were designed, like the thought process, but I don't care. In my head, uh, those are glowing green eyes. <laughs> Now with this being an ATRT mold clone trooper, surprisingly we don't get the battle damaged clip on chest plate that most of these guys came with. That would have been a really cool feature to have, especially with how unique these guys' deco is. But given the amount of things we're getting in this battle pack, I kind of get why they may have left that out, you know, just as a small little cost saver for them on their end. But really that would have been so awesome to get, just a little battle damaged chest to clip on there with this paint deco and all that. Now something else that's really cool and just worth noting in my mind is, you know, this, this lighter color of green doesn't really match with the 41st Elite, at least how we saw them in Revenge of the Sith. However, it does really nicely match with these guys. Like, I feel like this makes a much more cohesive unit than trying to blend these guys in with the 41st Elite. So in my sort of, you know, collector's headcanon, these guys are both part of like the same unit. Maybe it's a platoon or a regiment below the 41st Elite Corps. You know, who knows? But these just blend together so, so nicely with that light color of green. And you can kind of see here with the original 2005 ATRT Trooper, these guys go really well with the 41st Elite, with this 30th Anniversary Commander Gree. You know, the greens match very well, and they kind of don't match so well with this lighter color of green. So again, you kind of have two unique camouflaged units going on here. At least, again, in my mind, that's how it works for me. That's kind of how I try to organize them on my shelf. They're both still 41st Elite, but they're just different units, and I, I really like that. It, it probably wasn't intentional at all, but it works so well that it just, I don't know, I love that. I love that we got so many different variations of troopers for the 41st Elite, for Kashyyyk troopers in general. It's so cool. So now we gotta talk about the really cool play feature with these. And of course you gotta put two AA batteries there in the back, not included, because why would they be? That's just nonsense. Why would you, why would you include batteries with a child's toy? It's much better to not. And yes, I know that there's, there's you know, practical reasons for why they did not, but I wanna complain about that just because I can, I don't know. And yes, I know there are very practical reasons for not including a battery with a child's toy because they can, you know, erupt inside of the packaging, things like that. So there's practical reasons, but it's still annoying on Christmas morning to have to dig for some AA batteries to make your ATRT walkers do this. Yep, uh, they walk, and they do so fairly poorly. <laughs> they were 
I mean, you know, it's kind of tricky to uh, to design something that can do that, especially when they're trying to get each leg to lift up. You know, they probably could figure something out where it just shuffles. But yeah, um, you kind of saw for yourself there firsthand. It just kind of wobbles, just wobbles back and forth, trying to walk its way across the floor. I had a great deal of fun with this growing up. I think plenty of kids did as well. It's not the most accurate thing or anything like that, but it's fun. You know, it's... It's fun. You could set up an army of droids, let's say. You could set up like five droids here, just stand them up. We'll use the commander as the example here. And then the ATRT assault squad could go charging in very slowly. See? And just like that, an entire platoon of droids was taken out with one walker. Now, because of that mechanic, there is one flaw that these walkers have. And that is that they will almost never be laying perfectly flat with their feet. So you'll always have them kind of leaning in your display. Maybe one foot will be forward and one will be back, you know, stuff like that. It's a very small inconvenience, but it just is what you're going to get with these. You'll never have one where their feet are perfectly even with each other. It's just the name of the game with this design. But yeah, it's just cool to have that kind of play feature included with your Star Wars action figures. I don't feel like you get that terribly often anymore unless you get like an actual kid line, like maybe Mission Fleet would include something like this sometime. But getting this in the mainline three and three quarter inch figure line back in 2005, that was much more common. You know, you got like the, the spring action figures, you got the quick action clone troopers and Jedi that had spring waists. Features like that were just way more common back then. That was kind of the name of the game for action figures. And it was only in later years that they went towards more of a accuracy focused uh, version of the characters, especially as you got into like legacy collection and going forward, especially in the vintage collection, you basically lost all play features. And that's okay, you know, that's just kind of how the, the industry has developed over the past 20 years or so. And I think the bigger thing that's more fascinating to me is that if this truly was a Hasbro design from, you know, the ATRTs to the troopers to the commander, if this all was done by some Hasbro designer, first of all, I would love to know that for sure. Like, I'd love to talk to the designer and get to know the process that these went through. But second of all, that's just something you will not see these days. You will not see, especially in Hasbro, uh, that kind of freedom given to the toy producer to make their own design. Anymore, it's just, here's a character from the movie, make this exact thing. <laughs> Sometimes it's concept art, but even then it's still like, you know, make this character that's going to be in our final product. With these and some other clone troopers and probably some other characters in general from Hasbro, they are designed by them. And I think that is just so interesting, you know, to have a toy company be given the freedom to design their own characters. First of all, as a designer, that would be an amazing job to have. But second of all, you just don't see that with, you know, licensed IP. You might see that with a toy company that's making their own product line. In fact, you definitely would, but you wouldn't see that with a licensed IP. I love everything that goes into the making of the figures that we all know and love. I want to find out more and I would love to find one of the designers, you know, I've tried to find them online, just find a designer that was working in this era and who was willing to talk, but unfortunately I haven't been able to find one and I know that there are also a lot of NDAs in place that would cause them not to be able to talk about this type of thing. So yeah, it's, it's a whole thing. It's someday, someday I hope we will find out exactly where all these different clone trooper designs came from. But until then, we just get to, you know, imagine who may have drawn this up. So I guess in summary, this is just an awesome set. Not just because of the value that you get for the price, or at least back in the day you got for the price, but also because of the memories that I have from that Christmas, and then just all the days playing with this and having adventures and battles with these figures. It's, it's really jam-packed with everything that a good toy should be jam-packed with. I'd say if you can find one of these for a good price today, definitely pick it up. It's, it's too good not to. You know, it's, it's three really cool clone troopers with walkers that actually walk in camouflage deco, which is just something that you don't see too often with clone troopers. All in all, it's a really awesome pack. I really do hope that I can find one to keep in the box. That would just be so special for the collection, I feel like. I'm not really into the whole mint on card collecting, but for this, it's one of the rare instances that I just... Someday, I'd like to have that in the collection. 
But anyways, I suppose that's all there is to say about this. It's really awesome. I loved unboxing this. There's just so much nostalgia packed into this, and it was really fun to be able to do a video talking about it, just enjoying it for what it is and sharing that with all of you. If you have other suggestions for the throwback toy talk, I'd love to hear them down in the comments, and hopefully maybe I can do one of those in the future. But until then, there's a link down in the description if you want to check out my Instagram, uh, Facebook page, uh, Entertainment Earth if you want to order anything. It's all right down there. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe here on YouTube if you want to keep up with any videos that I'm releasing. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful evening, noon, or night, depending on when you're watching this video. And as always, I will be sure to catch you all in the next video.